Hello my friends, we are back at Six Flags Great Adventure. The first thing I want to show you right here is the line for Fast Pass or Flash Pass. It's almost at the fountain basically. Uh, I took a look at the last drop. They have finally released the Batman the Ride nano coaster as well as the Green Lantern nano coaster and there's also a coaster cutout for the Jersey Devil coaster. Jersey Devil coaster is currently down. I'm hoping to check that out one more time because I only got to see it during the previews wondering how it's been a week after it opened and what kind of tweaks they might have made to it. So I invite you to come along. Let's get this started. I decided to walk back this way because I knew there'd be less people. It looks like Cyborg Spin is actually going. And for some reason, there's like little to no line for Battle for Metropolis. It's just peeking out of the doorway there. Another good indicator of the crowds is usually Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth. But they do have the ropes here. Doesn't seem to be peeking out. I think I might have missed this last time, but it looks like the Batmobile got a fresh coat of paint. Uh, and there it goes. That classic sound of the lift hill. Not quite as loud as the Jersey Devils, though which we're gonna go visit in a moment. So I'm used to seeing the Nitro line out here, but now that they're using all of the switchbacks, that's a whole different story. So this is what I did, wasn't hoping to see. We got the uh, Welcome to the Pine Barren sign, which is new, but then I see over here the Jersey Devil Coaster. One of the trains is just there on the lift hill and empty. That's not a good sign. Just next to that Welcome to the Pine Barren sign, they have a little bay of uh, lockers here that is new. This wasn't here during the previews. They still have this nice little cart here for the merch. And it seems like they brought the pillows out here as well. Looks like the station, if we can zoom in a little, does have some people that are trying to get off and then just a large crowd of people being turned away be or to get in line if you want, but it's not guaranteed to open anytime soon. You know how that story goes. Looks like it just came to life a little bit. I wonder if it's just to get people off of the station off of the train here. There is one full train load just hanging out in the station. One thing I, I don't know if I mentioned it in my member preview video was that for whatever reason this coaster, much like El Toro and Kinda Ka, you have to have all loose articles and stuff. You have to basically use a locker for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of the moving station, but if you have like a zipper pocket or something like that, I feel like you should be okay, right? I know that there's certain rules in New Jersey, certain laws, I should say, that kind of prevent that, maybe. Or maybe it's just a risk thing. I have no idea, because I've definitely, once or twice before, had something whiz by my head, whether it was a phone or glasses or something. So, who knows? I don't know how I feel about it. I think zipper pockets or something like that should make it okay. Especially for the way that you're put into this ride. Anyway, I was not kidding about how loud this thing is. So I promise next time I'd be back, I would try out this hot burger at the Jersey Devil Barbecue. So we're gonna go for it. I have no idea what to expect. It sounds intense. So here is the hot burger. It's uh, got a lot of action going on in between those buns there. But I'm gonna enjoy this right in front of the Jersey Devil coaster because there's a severe lack of seating anywhere around here. So I'm going to enjoy this and I will report back to you in a moment. So I just got my three rides done on the Jersey Devil Coaster. One in row four, one in row 12, and the other one in row 10. You guys are out of here. I don't know why, for some reason, this ride is just not vibing with me. It's fun, got a fun layout. I've heard a lot of people enjoying it and having a great time. So I think the problem is me, which whatever, maybe I'm riding it wrong, I do not know. But for me, as smooth as everybody keeps talking about it, I don't sense the smoothness. I even overheard somebody saying that it was glass smooth. I just can't agree with that. But I will say that the pacing on that little zero G roll 
much improved. They did a great job doing whatever it is. I think that a lot of the tweaks happened with the wheels. Maybe they did something there, but it feels like a nice continuous roll rather than you're getting into the roll and then gravity takes over. One thing that I did get to experience that I didn't experience during the previews was I actually stopped on the mid-course brake run when I was in uh, seat four. And unfortunately that meant we slowly came out of the brake run and then kind of just glided and meandered and went over the off-axis hills and it was gentle. So that that's going to be a thing as long as they have like these weird loading uh, pickups here and there. The one thing I did notice just overall that this ride seems to be a little unforgiving for people, not like big people but just like seemingly like just slightly overweight people, people that I've seen fit on all the other roller coasters normally. Um, it is raining, I'm just hiding under a tree right now. I would love to get a rain ride right now and I'm going to try to do that. But yeah, for whatever reason, this isn't capturing my heart the way other roller coasters have. And you know how hard I will stand a ride, a roller coaster once, you know, it, it hits me nicely. This one, other than row eight and nine, I haven't really gotten that nice combination of, of air and pull. The back row, seat 12, is nothing but that pull and whip, and it loses some, a lot of the component of air because the trains are so long. And so I, I know a lot of people like that seat, but that I do like the weightlessness as well. And I feel like you lose a lot of it by going into the la very last row, but you do get pulled a lot. And if you like that, that's the seat for you. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that if you get stapled on this ride, it can be quite painful. I pu pulled down the lap bar. A lot of people are pulling down their own lap bars. They have like a mark or a, I think it's a piece of tape on the floor in the station because it does. it is a moving station. I don't know if I mentioned that before. It uh, almost reminds me of like a Disney Omni Mover ride where the train is just going by and everyone is going to their assigned seats as the train is moving and as soon as it's fully loaded then it gets to the lift hill and it goes but i pulled down the restraint and then the guy that was pushing down the restraints to check them gave it an extra push and i literally could not move my leg from knee to foot it was and you know how you sit on these you're kind of slanted with your leg and because there was no give I couldn't move it at all. I couldn't even like shift my foot to the left or the right. It just absorbed a lot of the forces that were happening. And when I came off, I was walking funny. I could feel it in like my uh, Achilles tendon. I really hope that that's not so like that's something that they're aware of that can happen because I, I walk, you know, at these theme parks so much that I'm sure that my legs had the strength for it. But for somebody else, that, that could have gone way more poorly. That could be bad to have your leg in a position where it has to absorb all those forces. So anyway, getting stapled on this ride is a horror show. Anyway, that was my long-winded second visit to the Jersey Devil. Let's now go check out the construction because they are bringing back a coaster that they had removed that was somewhere in this area before. So I just wanted to show you the continuous moving loading platform that they have. So that first train is all set to go. And then back here, the operators go down the line, bring that restraint down. That's how I got stapled. Somebody just gave it way too much of an aggressive push. And then down at the end there, that is where you're directed to which seat to go on. And I've seen all types of silliness to try to ensure a back seat. Just super unnecessary, but as you're coming off, it's the same type of experience. You just come off one by one, and then they will start loading you. And it'll just go like that throughout this station until you reach the front and head up on the lift hill all right so we're taking a quick peek over the fence here on the opposite side of where we just were and this is going to be the area where they're putting their quote-unquote 14th coaster but it's a coaster that was already in the park uh, you can see it from the nitro lift hill it's the old road runner roller coaster that's just been repainted orange and i don't know if they're going to be retheming this area the kids area could definitely use some love uh, but you can see kind of like the footers there in the center frame and all the dirt removal that is or earth <laughs> removal that's happening here. Taking a brief tea tour here at the sawmill log flume. I noticed that online it seemed that there was some sort of little accident, nothing crazy, just 
two logs bumping into each other or something like that. I have no idea why, but it looks like it's not operating today. It looks like these little flumes got drained. So unfortunately, there's no status on this right now. I don't know if it's closed because of the weather because it did just start raining a little harder. But I've heard rumors that this thing is not running its best right now. It looks like that they changed up this store and turned it into the Expedition Dino store, which if you guys haven't heard, I'm assuming most of you have heard that that's like an add-on now that's happening all summer over at the Safari. Oh, I guess I was mistaken. It's not through the drive-thru, it is a walk-through area. You have to keep away from the dinosaur, stay on the designated path, and tickets, ugh, tickets can be purchased at the dino store. Interesting, but it appears to be closed due to weather right now. They have some big photo op. I wonder why they don't do that for other rides. Like, Jersey Devil Coaster should have had some sort of Instagram wall, no? I had no idea. I thought that maybe they added it to the drive through experience. At least that's what I understood it as, but... Okay, it's a little walkthrough thing. Kind of like Dinosaurs Alive, I guess? All right, just getting on a rainy ride on El Toro. That was awesome. A little painful when the, the rain drops ping you in the face, but otherwise is running great. I don't think there's any bad time to ride El Toro unless it's super cold and then that really slows it down. But otherwise, always a good time for me anyway. I know some people think it's a little too intense for them, maybe. Um, definitely, if that's the case, ride on a non-wheel seat if you can. So like in the middle of one of the trains. That certainly helps. Um, and then stay away from the back, somewhere in the middle. Usually is a little more uh, uh, calmer. I don't know what to call it. Just got one more run on Jersey Devil Coaster. Probably the last one for me today. In the rain, it was actually pretty fun. Uh, I don't know if it was any smoother than before, but the extra element, I guess, was made it a little more fun. Um, it isn't riding any more faster or slower that I can tell. I think it has to do with like humidity right now and the rain. It didn't really cool down the track, so I wonder if this is going to be really affected during the cold. I'm hoping that it can run during like Fright Fest and stuff because this would be a shame if it couldn't. But I have heard that when it was running pretty slow, it valleys, so who's to say? But all in all, I still think this is like maybe top three or four in the park. Uh, I do know I will be back to check on this maybe in a month's time and we'll go from there. But for now guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And I hope you go make your own adventure.